We've all heard Carl Sagan say that we are all star stuff, but what exactly does that mean? That's what we're looking at today on Vintage Space. So before we look at what star stuff is and how we are star stuff, it's important to take a step back and look at how exactly stars form. Stars form from gigantic rotating clumps of gas and dust that condense and heat to the point where molecules of hydrogen collide and fuse into new molecules of helium. These nuclear reactions release powerful bursts of energy in the form of light. The gas starts to shine brightly and a star is born. Inside the most massive stars, other elements can fuse, but only certain elements, up to number 26 or iron on the periodic table. Other elements are formed when stars collapse. They then shoot these elements out throughout the universe, and some of them can end up in proto-solar systems like our own when it was just forming. So from stars that form at the center of solar systems to stars exploding and shooting other elements out throughout the universe, we are all made of the same stuff of stars. But how exactly did astronomers figure this one out? They did it by looking at the absorption spectrum of sunlight. The Snow Solar Telescope is one of the oldest solar observatories in the world, and it's still functioning today on the top of Mount Wilson, just north of Los Angeles. This telescope is not exactly typical in that it's not inside a tubular casing like the telescope that we might pull out ourselves to do our own star watching. The Snow Solar Telescope uses four mirrors, spans two buildings, and more than 100 feet in length, and I got to play with it over Memorial Day weekend. The sunlight is first focused on a ceiling that mirror that tracks the sun's movement across the sky. From there, it's sent to a secondary mirror, and then from that mirror all the way to the back of the far building to a third mirror. That mirror condenses the sunlight and pushes it to a fourth mirror that then shoots the beam down onto a spectrograph, and this is where it gets important. The sunlight passes through a slit down onto a lens halfway down a 30-foot pit below the observatory where it is broken into its composite wavelengths. That gives us the spectrum from red to violet that we typically see. Astronomers using the spectrograph could then see the entire wavelength of light, but when they looked at it through a photographer's loop, they noticed these dark lines punctuating the spectrum. Every element has a unique atomic structure with protons and neutrons in the nucleus and electrons orbiting around that center. Each atom's electrons are also uniquely spaced in orbits around the nucleus, and they can emit or absorb only certain energies or wavelengths of light. So those dark lines correspond to elements that are absorbing the sunlight. Looking down into that pit at the absorption spectrum of sunlight, astronomers figured out just what the sun is made of and knew that we are made of the same stuff. I've got pictures of the Snow Solar Telescope in action and an article describing exactly how it works over on my blog, Vintage Space, so be sure to check that out, the link is below. So are there any solar astronomers out there? Who among you prefer to look at our star as opposed to distant stars, or planets or moons for that matter? Let me know in the comments below, and of course, as always, leave questions there as well and ideas for future episodes. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter for daily Vintage Space content, and with new episodes going up every single Tuesday and Friday, be sure to subscribe so you never miss an episode.